I'm Sue Gilmore. I just moved to the UK from Canada this past August. Uh, so I'm not actually coaching in the UK at this point because of COVID. Uh, previously to moving over to the UK, I was the head coach of the varsity girls uh, basketball team at Lord Selkirk Regional High School in Selkirk, Manitoba. And I've been involved in that program for the past 12 years. Prior to that, I was coaching in Alberta uh, at the junior high level, and I also did a couple of seasons as the assistant coach at McEwen University. I am currently in Wyndham, Norfolk, which is just outside of Norwich. And my goal over the next couple of years is to start a girls or girls and boys basketball program out in the Wyndham area starting with some of the younger kids, uh, getting them involved in the sport, uh, as well as um, getting it to be more popular in the school that I'm currently working at, uh, so that basketball becomes a little bit more, more prominent in the community. I started coaching when I was in my first year of university. I was still playing at the time. My best friend had decided that she wanted to start coaching a little kids team in our community and that she wanted a little bit of help with it. So she asked if I could help her when I was available to help um, because she didn't know that she could do it on her own. So I did help out as much as I could. It wasn't because I was busy playing myself, so it wasn't as much as I would have liked. But I really liked watching the little girls um, develop and pro progress through very basic skills. I think they were in year five at the time. So they were really, really beginner. And it was a lot of fun working with them. Once I stopped playing myself, I had a whole bunch of extra time on my hands. So because I enjoyed that coaching experience so much, I decided that I wanted to get into coaching myself. So I went back to my old junior high uh, and or middle school and I talked to the current coach there. We hit it off right away. So I started coaching there and spent my first three seasons as a coach working with him in that program. And then it just kind of exploded from there. Uh, lots of different coaching experiences. Uh, for me, probably the thing I get out of the most is watching these kids grow and develop. Uh, I like to focus on developmental skills and the fundamentals so that you know you can see that development over the course of time and how much they improve. And I also like the relationships. So keeping up with some of my athletes that I coached you know, 10 years ago, just to see where they're at and continue those relationships as well. Um, probably my biggest influence as a coach would have been uh, my late high school coach. He unfortunately just passed away in the fall from cancer, uh, Mr. Brian Anderson. Uh, he was my high school coach for two seasons. Uh, his passion for the sport was unbelievable. He lived and breathed basketball. The passion that he brought to practices and that he put into coaching us in games, it was contagious. And it really just opened my eyes to the possibility of becoming a coach myself. And then when I did actually start coaching, he was always there to support me. Uh, he would come over to visit with my parents and he, him and I would sit and we would design a press break using ketchup bottles and mustard bottles on the kitchen table. Uh, this past February, I took uh, my high school team back to my high school for the tournament and he was there. And again, he came to every one of the games that my girls played and offered me advice and we talked strategy. And it was just, it was really cool to be able to do that almost 20 years later. Biggest challenge would probably be having to deal with parents. Uh, I know that parents have the best interests of their child at heart when they're um, being an advocate for their athletes. Um, unfortunately, they don't always see the bigger picture. And sometimes it can be a big challenge um, conveying the bigger picture to the parents because they are not at every practice. They are not at team meetings. They are not in the dressing room before and during games. So they really don't get to see the full scope of what's happening when you're coaching their kids. Uh, and so that's something that I am always trying to convince parents of is that, you know, you're only seeing the games. You're not seeing all the hidden stuff. So when you want to address a concern to keep that bigger picture in mind, 
most parents um, are understanding of that and they're very good about it, uh, but you do run into the occasional parent that maybe just can't see past their own children. Probably one of my highlights would be when I was the assistant coach with uh, McEwen University and we won the Dirty Gold uh, bronze medal at the Canadian National Tournament in 2002. We had an exceptional group of young women that worked really, really hard that year and the the sportsmanship of that team and the closeness of those girls is still going uh, t almost 20 years later. They do reunions every year, they get together every year, uh, and they just reminisce about that. So winning the bronze was really cool, but still engaging with those girls almost 20 years later is definitely a highlight. Uh, and then in 2012 or 2013, uh, with my junior varsity basketball program, we finished second at provincials. Uh, and that was the first time in almost 20 years that my high school has had a basketball team, male or female, at a provincial championship final. So that was kind of awesome. And the banner is still hanging in the gym at the school. So anytime people walk in, they get to see the provincial finalist banner hanging in our gym. For me, I have loved it because it gives me a chance to talk basketball with people who also are passionate about the sport. Uh, when we moved here, we knew two people and those are people that work with my husband. Um, so it's given me the opportunity to connect and to meet a lot of people across the country, which is fantastic. Um, but I feel like it's also given me an opportunity to look back on um, where I started and where I am now and given me the chance to kind of think about what I want to do in my own community and where I want to go as a coach in a new country uh, and how I can sort of um, be a groundbreaking coach and pay it forward from all the coaches that I've had in my past. So I'm absolutely loving it and I have learned a lot about myself already so far as a coach. Um, key strength would be developing fundamentals. Um, I really like to break things down. I like to be very thorough when I'm teaching fundamentals, especially to the little ones. Uh, lots of repetitions of fundamentals, because I think if you have good fundamentals, the rest of the game becomes a little bit more natural uh, and the strategy and everything can come behind having those fundamental skills for the sport. Um, I think as a female, the more confident you are, even if you don't feel confident, the more confident that you are and that you portray yourself, uh, the more you're going to succeed. Um, the last few seasons, my assistant coach was a male and um, oftentimes if referees didn't know, they would go to him first as the male, assuming that he was the head coach. Uh, thankfully, he was amazing and he would always say, nope, you need to speak to her. She is the head coach. Uh, so they would come over and talk to me. Um, I think as female coaches, uh, being a mentor, being a mentee, learning the game from whoever you respect and whoever you work with um, positively will help. Uh, but stick to your guns. Um, if you're confident and you portray confidence, then you can be an incredible coach. Okay, the hardest to teach. Uh, our emphasis or my emphasis as a coach in the last couple of years has been to do a read and react. Uh, the hardest thing to teach athletes at any level is, in my opinion, how to respond to certain situations quickly. Um, so you need to have enough of a basketball IQ to understand that if a defender is closing out on you and they're really far away, they're leaving the shot. If they close out really close to you, they're giving you the lane. It's being able to react really quickly to those concepts uh, that I find hard, especially with young female athletes who maybe don't have a lot of ex playing experience. Um, that's a skill that's hard to teach. Uh, aside from fundamentals, one of my favorite thing, 
favorite skill to teach is fast break. Uh, I love a fast game. I love pushing the tempo of the floor. I love being able to do, capitalize on easy points because the defense is slow or they're not getting back quickly. Um, so I like to emphasize a lot and do a lot on transition drills. Um, my favorite coaching movie would be Remember the Titans. I think you get a lot of really good examples of different type of leadership, some that's effective, some that is not effective, uh, regardless of the sport or regardless of the athletes. Um, gives you some really good perspective on how to deal with them. If I was talking basketball movie, I would say Hoosiers. Uh, it's an old school movie and I actually just sent that off to a couple of my colleagues who are not really big basketball people. Uh, they were looking for movies to watch during lockdown, so I suggested that they go with Hoosiers because it is a phenomenal basketball movie um, and one of my favorites. It wasn't during a game, but the craziest thing I saw was when I was teaching a year 12 PE basketball class about four years ago. Two kids shot the ball at the exact same time and at the exact perfect angle that both of the basketballs were stuck side by side in the middle of the rim. I've never seen that before, but it proved to the kids that you can fit two size basketballs inside the rim. Uh, whistle. <laughs>